from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. My name is Father Jack Lynch. And the televising of the Mass is made possible by a contribution from Deanna and Victor Andrew from Don Mills. The Mass is offered in thanksgiving for the innumerable blessings received through the intercessions of our Blessed Mother of Perpetual Help for the living and the deceased members of their family and friends for the good health and the wealth of all of the Daily TV Mass viewers. Deanna and Victor Andrew have been faithful supporters of the Daily TV Mass since we first began broadcasting, and they have our thanks and the thanks of all who have gathered daily in this sacred celebration. And so we begin as we should always begin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. As we gather, we are always in the presence of our God wherever we are, but we know we are in the presence of a God who is very close, a God who is merciful and gracious, a God who readily forgives. And so we ask forgiveness of our sin, we ask forgiveness of God, we ask forgiveness of each other. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us, pr let us pray. Impart to your servants, we pray, O Lord, the gift of heavenly grace, that the feast of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin may bring deeper peace to those for whom the birth of her Son was the dawning of salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With delight I rejoice in the Lord. With delight I rejoice in the Trusted in your steadfast love, my heart shall rejoice in your salvation. With delight I rejoice in the Lord. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. With delight I rejoice in the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. 
Virgin Mary, deserving of all praise. From you rose the Son of Justice, Christ the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Now, the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quickly and quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And all this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel which means God is with us. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If you're following along with your missalette or the reading for the day, you'll realize that I have selected to use the shorter reading because the first part of the reading is what we call the genealogy, the genealogy from Matthew. And for many years, I listened to the genealogy and wondered why it was included in our celebrations. I didn't really understand it, and I don't think I'm alone in that. But it was after listening to Father Raymond Brown, one of our great scripture scholars, that it helped me to appreciate exactly what he was saying, according to Matthew, leading up to the birth of Mary. And it's very important because it gives us a really wonderful sense of God and how God works in history. See, from Matthew, the origin of Jesus starts with Abraham, with Abraham begetting Isaac, but we remember that Abraham's eldest son was Ishmael, and the account continues with Isaac begetting Jacob, who also had an older brother, Esau, who was more honest than Jacob, who stole his brother's birthright. Father Brown points out that the puzzle continues with Jacob begetting Judah and his brothers. But why is Judah singled out while their younger brother, Joseph, who forgave them for selling him into captivity in Egypt, is not even mentioned? After all, surely Joseph is the embodiment of Jesus and not Judah, who sold his brothers and sought out prostitutes. But Brown tells us it's very interesting to see what Matthew has written, and he concludes that Matthew's choice of Isaac over Ishmael Jacob over Esau, Ju Judah over Joseph, is faithful to the New Testament insight that God frequently does not choose the best or the noble or the saintly. Matthew is faithful to the insight about God who is not controlled by human merit, but manifests the unpredictable gratuitousness of a creator God. He tells us that Matthew's genealogy is telling us that the story of Jesus Christ contains as many sinners as saints and is written with the crooked lines of liars and betrayers and the immoral, not only with straight lines. He tells us really that the genealogy stresses above all the all-powerful grace of God working in history. The first section builds up from Abraham to David 
The second section focuses on the reigning Judean kings of the house of David. The first part builds up from Abraham, who had no land, to David, who rules as king in possession of the promised land. David, when everything went downhill from David to the deportation to Babylon, in other words, it goes from possessing land to losing it. And of the 14 Judean kings that Matthew lists, between David and the deportation, only Hezekiah and Josiah could be considered as faithful to God's standards in the book of Deuteronomy. The rest were an assortment of idolaters, murderers, incompetent power seekers, and playboys. And that's what Matthew is trying to show us. The way that God works in and through people, the least expected, and what we find is that with the powerful rulers in the monarchy, God brought God's people to a low point, presumably ordinary people, proportionately divided among saints and sinners, were the vehicles of restoration. But there's still an under, another indicator of the unpredictability of God's grace, is that the purpose of God is accomplished through those whom others regard as unimportant and quite forgettable. What's also interesting about the genealogy is most genealogies were traced through the lineage of the males. In this case, there are four women mentioned. It's quite unique to find the four women, and above all, that Matthew is really, all of them are Gentiles, and Matthew is really telling his audience that yes, the gospel, the good news, is intended for all people, including the Gentiles. But this choice of some of these women is most surprising as some of the, all of the women had a marital history that contained elements of scandal or scorn. Rahab was a prostitute. But all of them introduced the fifth woman, Mary, whose marital status or situation is peculiar because she's pregnant but has not had relations with Joseph. She's the instrument par excellence of the Holy Spirit who has begotten Jesus in her womb. I say all of this because I think it's important that we recognize that God is always present in history. Sometimes it's not always in the perfect, not always in the noble, but God is always present. The grace of God is always operative, no? and it presents to us a God who did not hesitate to use the scheming as well as the noble, the impure as well as the pure, men to whom the world hearkened, and women upon whom the world frowns. But God's grace continues to work, not only with Peter, who denied Jesus, or Paul, who persecuted him, but today with us. We consider ourselves sinners, but God is present, and God is, continues to be present, and God's grace is here to give us the strength and the courage to be faithful witnesses. That's the good news. So we give thanks this day for the magnificent gift of grace. We give thanks for the gift of Mary, the mediatrix of grace, the Christian par excellence, who accepts the word of God, embraces it, and lives it completely in her life. So we rejoice this day in God's grace, but God's unpredictable graciousness, as we say, but for the grace of God. We give thanks this day that God's grace is gifted to us. We pray for those who join us, join us via television, for the many intentions that they've asked that we remember in our prayer this day. And so for all of them, we pray to the Lord. We pray in a very special way this time for the, vic the victims of abuse, particularly the victims of abuse by personnel in the church, ministries. It's disgraceful and needs to be reconciled. And so we pray that they will be healing, healing for the victims, healing for all involved. And for that grace, for them and for our church, we pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for peace, peace in our own hearts, peace in our homes, peace in our communities. And we know full well that Mary as the mediatrix of grace will help. And so we pray asking her to intercede for us. And for that grace, we pray to the Lord. We pray this day that all of us will be instruments of peace, instruments of reconciliation in all that we do. And for that grace for all of us, we pray to the Lord. 
I would be remiss if I didn't remember all the sick who joined with us from hospitals, from senior homes, from wherever they might be. We pray for them and their caregivers that God will be with them. For all of them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And all of this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer. Fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual food. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Thank you. And pray, friends, that this sacrifice, mine and yours, may become acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. And may the humanity of your only begotten Son come, O Lord, to our aid. And may he who at his birth from the Blessed Virgin did not diminish but consecrated her integrity by taking from us now our wicked deeds make our oblation acceptable to you. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just. It's our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the saints and above all in Mary, we pray this day for the sake of the kingdom of heaven and its right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and the saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and the working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O oh lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, and all your saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. And may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, and to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, for there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. For it is through him, with him, and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And faithful to the teaching of Jesus, we pray just as he taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer to each other a sign of that peace. <clears throat> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the Lamb. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. For those of you at home, join with me now in this prayer for serenity. O God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardships as the pathway to peace, taking, as he did, this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will, that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever. Amen. And let us pray. May your church exalt, O Lord, for you have renewed her with these sacred mysteries as she rejoices in the nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, which was the hope and the daybreak of salvation for all the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And let us go in the peace of Christ, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks. I just want to take a second to remind you that on Sunday from now on, there is a telecast of the Mass on the same channels that you watch during the week. Go in the peace of Christ and have a good day. Thanks. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. On behalf of our celebrants and all of us at the Daily TV Mass, our best wishes for a restful weekend, and we'll be looking for you all again come Monday. Rain from heaven, dear.